Hi, hello, I am Colby, I am Code Dameron, and I am the coach of the Boca Raton Valley Bulls, and I am here with the scoop. I have exposed all the secrets of the VBLS. I know what you're all up to. I know what you've been hiding. I've pieced it together, I've figured it out, and I'm going to lay it bare for all to see. The evidence, VBLS is littered with challenges. We have coaches who think that they are the best of the best because they are. They make content, they make good hyped up battles and sometimes at the end of the season they'll reveal that they've been fooling us all along, restricting their moves, restricting their color palette, or doing some nonsense parallel universe similar draft strategy. It's gotten out of hand and I've discovered that this season Every single coach plans on doing some sort of challenge, and I know what they are. I know, I've done the research, I've figured it out, and I'm gonna tell you all what they are, because they're locked in based on the draft, based on their plans, based on the commitment to themselves and the BBLS. Use this as your guide to know how to beat these players at their own game. I'm putting these teams in no particular order, a random order. And in fact, I randomized this list and did it in reverse so that nobody knows, you know, there's no, there's no, there's no secret to this pattern of who is being presented in which order. Let's start first with Samax. Samax, his challenge is the AI team building. Samax knows that he built a simple team. It's it's simple for a reason. He's going to feed his team through AI intelligence learning every week, and every week it will get smarter. He will use different softwares each week to build his whole team and run with it. I think Samax serves a great has a great chance of winning this season, and it won't even be his own work. The, the kicker to this is that AI may even suggest illegal moves and strategies. And you know what? Samax will run it anyway. As a handicap though, his creativity may be stifled because his nicknames will be chosen by the AI too. Keep an eye out. Samax, we're watching you. V. We all know that V first picked Ogre Pond Wellspring. Why did they do that? Of course, they're doing the same type Terra challenge. Everyone knows that terroring into your same type will boost your attack power and V is just gonna do that every single week. They even drafted Greninja, which has Protean, which can change its type. I bet V is gonna try to pull a, a loophole on us and, and terror terra Greninja into some weird type that isn't darker, darker water. We're watching you and you know what? I'm kind of scared because all that extra power, you know, who needs defense when you've got, you know, your terrors in order? They're already set for you. Pancake. Pancake is where we get a little bit weird. Pancake plans on being a detective. Pancake isn't going to KO you without knowing exactly what you're holding. Pancake drafted double frisk. Pancake has a slow game plan. He has time to think of what your items are. There are booster energies running around. He has three sets even to figure out all of your team's items. I'm sure that Pancake isn't going to take a single kill this season until knowing that knowing your items. And you know what? If, it, if he messes up, I'm sure he'll have one last shot without looking at any pace to figure it out all at the end. You ever play Clue? You like figure it out all at the end? That's Pancake's strategy. I don't, I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to let him have it. He's not going to trick my items. He's not going to knock them off. Not a chance, Pancake. Get out of here. Slushy? Slushy has a devious plan. Slushy picked all of these Pokemon with signature moves. Incineroar gets Darkest Lariat. It's in Smash. Urshifu gets Wicked Blow, or whichever Urshifu he drafted. Smurgle gets Sketch. Alcremie gets Decorate. Reboot, that gets Court Change. Slushy isn't going to use a single signature move on any of these Pokemon. Do you think Urshifu is good because of the Wicked Blow? No. Slushy is going to prove to us that he is that good. That Slushy just knows how to use these Pokemon. And you know what? I think the biggest insult is he's not even going to bring Sketch Smurgle once. <sighs> Sketch can learn any move and he's not even going to bring it to a match. Insulting to the rest of us. Don't let, don't let Slushy get away with this. Boom, boom, look at, look at boom. 
from drafting a trick room team. Now, this is not just a trick room team. It's a trick room team that is not fully slow enough because Bohm knows. Bohm knows that he's going to put a power item, the band, the lens, the goggles, the weight, the bracer. He's going to load his team up with the power, up, power items. No iron ball, no room service. Put a power item on your mon. Reduce its speed by half. Make it a super trick room mon. Furgruff doesn't need an item. Aqua Rockwood doesn't need an item. And then, in, it, there's, si there's, si there's six of them, right? So in, the, in week seven, Boma's gonna style on whoever's their last, their last uh, challenge and bring all seven, uh, all six power items on all six, of, uh, all six of his mons. I am afraid for whoever, it may be me, whoever has to face against the all six power item team. <sighs> that player's gonna need a lot of help. Ryan? Ryan picks a very low to the ground draft. Max points 19, but look, Fungus wants to switch. Palathon wants to switch. Arcanine wants to switch. Reuniclus has Regenerator wants to switch. Dragapult has fast uh, U-turns. Alakid probably has Volt Switch. Ryan is going to switch his Pokemon every single turn. He has to, that's the challenge. And you know, you could do this with Eject Pack. You can do this with, with red card uh, trick plays. And you know what? If you're not waiting for it, if you're, if you're looking for the switch, you might get trapped in by Doug Trio. Keep an eye out for Ryan switching. Too bad, too bad. Ryan knows there's no pursuit in the format. That move was kicked to the curb a couple seasons ago, a couple generations ago. I'd be afraid of what Ryan's cooking because Ryan's gonna be switching every single turn. Camo? Camo has a simple, simple, simple strategy. Camo is going to train all of his Pokemon on a team every week exactly the same. The natures can differ, the stats are different, but you know what? When you buy that many vitamins, I'm sure that Whole Foods gives you a discount, and Camo is gonna come with super special attacking Typhlosion, Typhlosion, uh, Sylveon, Basculegion, special attacking Rhyperior, and then next week, it's gonna come with full bulk, bulk on Typhlosion. You're not gonna know what to do. You're gonna have all these physical mons, physical bulk. I'm terrified. Camo has this plan from the start. It's gonna pull the wool over all of our eyes. No one's gonna see it. Camo, camouflage. No one saw it coming. I did. Now you know. James. James has a very, a very, a very simple, very, very, very righteous plan. Monogamy. Every partner has Pokemon. Every Pokemon has a partner. Mousehole is a whole family of partner Pokemon. So he's going to pair every Pokemon with another one. Maybe Mousel plus Primate for that beat up strat. Maybe Como plus Trevenant. Maybe Ursaluna plus Uxie. Who knows how James is going to pair them up. But once they are paired, that is the only leads that James is going to bring. James wouldn't, be, wouldn't, wouldn't do that to these partners. Split them up. Unacceptable. And you know what? You know what's so terrible about this? James picked such a, a, a spread out even team of 11 Pokemon. There's no Bagmon. I'm sure that one Pokemon here doesn't, doesn't get a partner and doesn't get to come to the lead ever. I think it's the Eel. I don't think Eel wants to lead, but you know, that, that's, that's the trick. But once you figure out James's leads, they won't change. Part, Partis. Partis is all about partner abuse. And no, Partis is not about partner abuse. Partis is not mean. Partis does not do that. But Partis is Pokemon team. They're going to be hitting each other every single week. Look at all these. We have two Telepathy Mons. We have Colossal that wants to take damage. We have Iron Hands and Amoongus meant for soaking up hits. Partis is going to make a fool out of all of us by hitting his own Pokemon for his own benefit. Watch out for Weakness Policy. Watch out for Colossal Strats. Watch out for Boom Burst. Watch out for... Uh, uh, all sorts of things. Watch out for Lava Plume. I don't even know where... Oh, my God. Colossal Dashbone Lava Plume. Pardis is going to hit his own Pokemon every single week and make a fool out of us. Don't get caught. Don't, don't... And, and, and don't, don't let Pardis get away by saying, Oh, I pollen puffed my partner. That's, that's, that's... Counts as hitting my partner. No. Pardis is going to challenge himself and make a fool out of all of us by damaging his partner Pokemon or using telepathy or nonsense every single week. I won't stand for it. Keith is going to multitask. Keith wants to ring that bell. Keith doesn't have time. Keith thinks he doesn't even have time to just play in the VBLS. Keith is going to be playing a VBLS match and another match at the same time. Keith is going to be multitasking his games. Look, this, this team is easy mode. Chiyu, Iron Bundle, Zapdos, just hit special attacks. And then on the side, you can play your rank matches with your full teams. 
he thinks that he can split his his mental abilities like Meta. I'm not I'm not having it. Keith, I'm gonna draw your full attention. I don't think I'm matched up against you, but your opponents will. They deserve it, and you're not getting away with this. Fret. Fret picks the ultimate spread move team. Golden Go, make it rain. Volcarona, uh, uh, struggle bug. I know that his uh, uh, heat wave is old news. Struggle bug. Uh, or which one? Which one hits both? I think it's struggle bug. Rotom Wash, discharge. Snorlax and Haxorus, and Flygon, earthquake. You brought Flygon, so you can just do earthquake, earthquake things. No disquake, just quake, quake, and disquake. <sighs> Rock slide on Golem. Discharge next to Pack Chirisu. Fur is going to clown on us with spread moves. And when you think you're safe, Ditto's gonna come out. Ditto's gonna come out, take more spread moves, and give spread moves that aren't even on Ferret's team. Bring your wide guards. No one is safe. Beebraff? Beebraff is a purist. I've dug deep. I've dug deep into Beebraff's files. Beebraff tapped in his Pokemon journey at Pokemon Blue. Did not play red. I'm a Pokemon Blue fan myself, but didn't play red. Probably didn't even play yellow. Won't go past the 151. That's why they ten drafted Tentacruel, and that's why they drafted Golem. <sighs> even though it's Golem Alola, still drafted Golem. Beebraff will not let his EV spreads go past 151. Yeah, he'll he'll use all of his EVs, but no EV is gonna get that high. So if you're looking for speed tiers, you can take advantage of knowing that Beebraff isn't going to exceed that cap of 151. I bet Beebraff will even use 151 and waste those EV spread points just because he loves Gen 1 that much. Tay, Tay is all about the boosts. Tay, Tay thinks that he can get away with just combos and and stupid things like uh i don't know screen tail with bulk up that would never work in a match that would never be anyone any real player who would work their salt tay's gonna take that to the next level every strategy is going to be boost this boost that why do you think cloth is on the team free boost why do you think oracorio is on the team free swords dance free dragon dance free uh, quiver dance Raging Bolt and Great Tusk? Well, Tay, you can only get one booster energy. Which one are you going to give it to? And which one is going to have to boost themselves? You going to run Sunny Day Great Tusk? I bet you would. And look, I know that you're looking at status moves, that Will-O-Wisp, that Toxic. Maybe even at least see them from Arboliva. I'm saying that's not going to cut it. No kills with status moves, Tay. Keep it honest. Heaven. Oh my goodness. I, I don't know if any of you have been watching Heaven's corporate PR, but Heaven's been scooping up nothing but 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 corporate CEOs for their whole draft. Of course, Reggie Steele, Latias' wife. I was watching. I was watching. Heaven keeps hiring down the totem pole. And you know what? Heaven knows this. Heaven's gonna give all the grunt work to the Pokemon down at the bottom. I bet Hydrogen, Glimmit. It's a Titan, Slowbro. These are the ones that are going to take all the kills. And you know what? Pyroar is going to be Heaven's kill leader. And Registeel is going to sit back, take the hits. Latias is going to give the support. Gyarados, Intimidate. Take all the credit. Oh, yeah. I'm the CEO of the team. Look at me go. No. It was the, the hardworking interns, Hydrogen and especially Pyroar, that are going to take all of Heaven's kills this season. LS. LS thinks that they can get away with going really fast. LS, look at this fast team. Chiampao, Ogre Punch, Zapdos, Monkey Dory. That's uh, Lycanroc. That's min base speed 100. Ignore all the stuff at the bottom. Ignore Pilot Swine. We go to Wug Trio for a one pointer. LS is going to make sure that they match up each Pokemon with a, with a target opponent. And every time that those Pokemon get matched up, LS is going to go first. Ellis is going to beat them in the speed race. Ellis isn't going to run away and switch out. Doesn't matter. No protects. No, no quick attacks. No ice shards. Just fair, honest, outspeeding because Ellis thinks that he can, he, can, he can do that. And of course, no choice scarf. That's doping. And no, no trick room. That's dopey. Who would do that on such a fast team? Come on, Ellis. Get your head in the game. Lackey. Lackey thinks that they can get away with drafting like six or seven full modes of teams. Look at this. Tyranitar, Excadrill, Houndstone, that's a sand mode. Look at this. Indeedee, Duotion, that's a, and Weirder, that's a psychic terrain mode. Look at this sun mode with Raikou, Boot Bonnet, Boot Bonnet, Sildewayne, Fletchender, that's a sun mode. 
Blackie is gonna build his entire team around a different mode every single week and thinks that they can get away with just picking the weaknesses to exploit and then matching it up. Look, if you're playing against Lackey, predict which ones they're going to go with. If they do sand mode, you know they're not gonna do it again. Don't bring your sand counters, bring your sun counters. Don't let Lackey get away with exploiting your weaknesses. Daddy, Daddy had the wheel. Daddy had the last pick. Daddy could do whatever he wanted and build the perfect team of synergy. Heat, Heatran, Primarina, Hydrapple, Hitmon top. Doesn't even matter what moves these mons click. Regilecki, gonna click an electric move. Doesn't matter. Daddy's just gonna randomize and move. Daddy's gonna build one team, sit back, and just roll some dice. Maybe do a random ge generator. Maybe pick some balls out of a bingo thing. Who knows what Daddy's gonna do to pick his moves. But you know that Daddy's not the one behind the wheel. Daddy's gonna build and then let, and let, let, let the car drive itself. I think it's despicable picking such a linear team, such a balanced team, and not even piloting yourself. And look, I'm sure that Daddy thinks that he can get away with, oh yeah, look, I'm just gonna run Choice Scarf or Choice Specs or Choice Anything and get away with running just one move. Oh, I don't have to randomize it, I'm using one move. I think that diminishes your team. I think you picked a great team and you're gonna use it despicably. Come on, Daddy, get your head in the game. Red Jolteon. Red Jolteon thinks that they can get away. What, what are you gonna do? You win? You're gonna win again? No, Red Jolteon's gonna lose and lose on purpose. I'm not saying that Red Jolteon can lose. I'm not saying that Red Jolteon is going to aim to lose. Red Jolteon's goal is not to win the entire conference again, but to get the highest kill count with the fewest overall wins. Watch out for this. Fluttermane's really good at this. You know, you get a really good kill with it and then it dies. Garchomp, what a great Pokemon, 102 speed. Gets a kill, then dies. I think you watch Red Jolteon's games this season and you'll see a lot of kills, but not a lot of wins. And I think this is intentional. Red Jolteon, I'm coming for you. It is, it is a scary team though. Don't actually don't accidentally win. Then you'll then you'll be losing your own challenge. Come on, Red Jolteon. You know what you you know what your actual goals are here. Goose, Goose's job. Goose's first pick of the whole draft was Archaludon, the new bridge Pokemon. Goose is here to build bridges. Build bridges with the community, through the community. Goose isn't here to win. Goose is here to build a bridge and learn something new about his opponent every single match. And then Goose is gonna follow that up. Follow that up with heartfelt thank yous, heartfelt birthday remembrances, heartfelt thank you cards. And you know, Goose is gonna do this on hard mode and not even use GLHF at the beginning of their matches. You think you're gonna build bridges with the whole community? I'm not gonna have it. Maybe I will. Sounds actually really kind of you. I'd love to know more about you, Goose. You seem like a great guy. J-Star. J-Star picks a team with a couple of fast Pokemon. Impidip is even that fast. It's just kind of prankster. But look at all the Encore users. It's Screamtail, the Encore user, Raichu, Zoroark. J-Star doesn't want to Encore your Pokemon. J-Star is going to Encore you. J-Star is going to Encore his opponents. They're going to have to stand up and clap for him and then they'll lose the battle probably on timer or something. If you're playing against J-Star, resist the urge to clap. Bring your own mental herbs, not for your Pokemon, but for you. Don't get caught. It's a dirty trick. Don't get encore. Your Pokemon probably don't, don't get them encore either, but don't yourself get encore. Toxic. Toxic is toxic. Toxic's goal is to be toxic, but toxic's not mean. Toxic's not a mean person. Toxic is just, you know, toxic. But Toxic picked a toxic team, a status team. This team is status first on every corner. Toxic is not going to just kill you. Toxic is going to weaken you, cripple you, burns, paralysis, sleep, and of course, that Dragalge Toxic. And then he'll take his kills. Spectre of Excalibur. Spectre isn't here to sh throw shadow balls. It's your, that Will-O-Wisp. Excalibur isn't even here. To, to, to do status. Baxalibur is here to absorb will o status. He can even be toxic. What are you going to do against it? Clefable can't even be toxic. Bax can't be will o Clefable, Clefable can't be toxic. Watch out for this. You know, bring your safeguard into the toxic matchup. Then that, that'll really get in Toxic's head. That's how you beat Toxic for sure, with safeguard. 
Firefalls. Firefalls drafted a crazy unique team with no fire, water, grass, electric, or dragon Pokemon as long as you don't count plus one Gramble Gas. What a team composition. And you know what? It goes one step further. If you go through the files, if you look at Firefalls DMs, you'll see that Firefalls isn't even going to Terra into any of those types. The whole season, Firefalls is playing with two thirds of the type chart. Probably gonna make a trade or two here or there. Firefalls is going to make fire fall off the type chart. Don't let it happen. Jace, Jace, uh, what a fall, what a fall. What despicable, multiple trades during the, 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 during the draft with some other coaches, myself might be included, but that doesn't matter. Why would you trade so much? And that's because Jace has drafted all four weathers and all four terrains. You think he doesn't have snow escape? Look at snow, slow poke. You think that there's no psychic terrain? Slow poke again. Jace is going to win a match in every single weather. And you know what's even crazy about that? There's only seven weeks. There's eight weathers and terrains. Jace is going to build multiple teams with multiple weather and terrain modes. I won't stand for it. You shouldn't either. Bring your counter weather and your counter terrain because he's coming for you and we can't let it happen. Joey Jokestar. Joey Jokestar, the Joe, Joe is gonna trade. He's the trader Joe. Joe is gonna trade every single week. Why do you think Sandal is on this team? It's to be traded. Joe thinks he can trade every single week, but he forgot to calculate. There are seven weeks and only four free agent trades. You're gonna have to get creative with other coaches. What's gonna happen? That 28 point Urshifu is looking real nice. Real, be real a shame if you had to trade that. And you know what? Other people, other people have teams that they've built and they care about. You might have to trade down. What if you traded a whole bunch of good Pokemon for a whole bunch of Pokemon that didn't really make sense? Joey, check yourself. These trades are not gonna go as easy as you think they are. This is a hard challenge and I wish you the best of luck, my man. Electric. Electric has been doing the A to Z challenge on, on their uh, YouTube channel this whole time. And you know what? It goes further. Why wouldn't Electric be in the VBLS doing the A to Z challenge as well? Electric's team will have all Pokemon brought onto the field in alphabetical order by nickname, so they have a little bit of control. Electric will be clicking all of their moves in alphabetical order, of course, right? And then all KOs, all opposing Pokemon, must be taken in alphabetical order. So if you're playing against Electric, make sure that you name your most prior prioritized Pokemon at the end of the alphabet. Give them a Z name, right? Give that A to your low point, point Pokemon. Don't let Electric get the better of you. And you know what? You know what's great about the VBLS? You know what's great about Reg F? Z moves are banned. Electric isn't gonna have a great finisher on any of his mons. <laughs> no Z moves, Electric. What are you thinking? Good luck with this challenge. Steve. Steve is actually pretty above board. Steve, I don't think he's actually up to anything. I've looked at Steve's files, you know, clean as a whistle. See, even Daisy thinks so. Steve knows what's up. Steve has a history of doing challenges, but I think that this time, Steve is actually resisting the urge to do challenges. Isn't that right, Daisy? Yeah, Daisy thinks so too. Da Steve, what a stand-up guy. No challenges, no content, just good, honest gameplay, optimal drafting, normal and balanced teams. Nicely done, Steve. We we should all look up to you as, as, as a pillar of the community. Thank you so much for you and your content and your and your completely normal drafting style. Sukaba. Sukaba might have one of the hardest challenges of all this season. Sukaba's challenge is contemporary jazz. Normally, if you ever watch the Grandma's Toby Kiss's content, it is nothing but calm, chill, smooth, calm, and collected jazz. But this time, no. Sukaba's gonna ramp it up. Sukaba's gonna listen to contemporary jazz. High tempo, heart pumping. Who knows what tense situation Sukaba and the Grandma's Toby Kiss are gonna get into. You think gouging fire, fire and Grim Snarl? You think Articuno just plays the bass? No, no. They're gonna get funky with it. Get ready for a, an edgy and contemporary look at the Grandma's Toga Kisses this season. Poppin? Poppin. Everyone thinks Poppin's going bulky, but no. Poppin's tricking all of you. Poppin is not letting his the help get better the better of him. Poppin will not invest a single point into HP this whole season. Look at all these bulky Pokemon. What do they have in common? 
they're already bulky. They don't need more HP. Not even that extra four that comes after you do a 252, 252. Not even that. Poppin' is gonna invest in nothing but offense, defense, and speed. Not a single point in HP the entire season. And you know what? They're gonna get away with it. All of these boosts on this team make sense. Why You can't even boost HP, you can get plus attack. That multiplies your attack stat. Why would you invest in HP you can't get plus HP? That's crazy. Colby, Kodama, coach of the Boca Raton Belly Bolts. Who knows what challenge they're doing. My files got corrupted. Missing no is here messing everything up. <sighs> Could be anything. Could be nothing. Probably nothing. Probably nothing. Right? 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 But Ray. Ray has bought it, brought a team with no priority users. Yeah, King Gambit has Sucker Punch, but Ray's not going to need it. Ray isn't going to let uh, priority moves dictate the way he lives. Ray is just going to go fast or slow in Trick Room without priority. Ray is going to play that good, honest game. I'm not even sure if Ray is going to click on Protect. Certainly not running Psychic Terrain. Psychic Terrain on that Rabska. That would be blocking priority moves. And that's not integral to your opponent. That's, that's not integrity. That's not cool. And no Click Claw. That gives you pseudo priority. Ray, that's not allowed. I'm not even sure if you should be clicking Rage Powder on that Venomoth. Ray, if you click on any, uh, if you click on Protect, I think we're gonna have to have a council and see if you failed your challenge. Purple Rain, it's so easy. It's in the it's in the name. Purple is going to have a purple Pokemon in the rain every week. Step one, click on Rain Dance. Step two, be purple. Metagross, Psychic type. Gramble, purple. Slowbro, also purple. And you have Terra Psychic and Terra Poison, two very complementary types and great on this team. Purple Rain is just going to have Purple Rain on their team. And then they're gonna bring Belly Bolt every week because why wouldn't you bring Belly Bolt every week? I mean, if I had Belly Bolt, I would bring Belly Bolt every week. And if you didn't, you probably failed the challenge and Belly Bolt. So please, I mean, we all know you're gonna bring Belly Bolt every week. Just accept it and roll over and accept your defeat because Belly Bolt's the best. Good luck, Purple Ring. And finally, Tux. Tux, as the number one on this list, clearly wants to be the very best like no one ever was. Also, don't let someone else or some dumb challenge define your success. You try your best. That is you doing your best. That is the challenge. That's the challenge we all have every day. And Tux knows this. Tux is going to be the very best that they can be every single day. That's, that's the only measure of success that they need. Finally, I've rated all of my challenge difficulties here. This is certainly not just the order that we've just re reviewed all these challenges, but I think that the challenges actually go in a nice ascending order of difficult and rewarding to simple and easy. So this is kind of my, if you want to take a, take a picture of this, you know, this is uh, certainly an objective and certainly fair and true um, order of, of challenge difficulty. And then finally, uh, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks again to Jace, by the way, for helping me format and organize. And don't get got by the VBLS. Now you know. Don't get got.